How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my channel. For those that are new here, welcome. My channel we're going to talk about pretty much everything involved in nerd culture. I uh, talk about miniatures, painting, comic books, Legos, um, action figures. One thing I'm learning and trying to find out more about is action figure and Lego photography. So that'll be something you guys will learn with me as I go along. Um, today I'm going to really focus on two Lego builds that I've done recently. One is a personal mock that I've done, worked up, based on a TV show I'm really fond of. Another one is a Technic build. I don't really do Technic too often, but uh, it was gifted to me by one of the um, viewers of the channel. They started it and they did uh, bag one of six. And they kind of got tired of it and they, they didn't want to finish it. They thought it was just going to sit around, so they wanted to make sure it did get built. So they donated it to me, and uh, it was quite possibly the hardest Lego build I've ever done because it is a uh, a Technic build primarily, and I don't like Technic. It's one of the banes of my existence, and um, it was a tough build to be honest, very very tough build. But when I finished, it was worth it. It was a very impressive build and model kit, to say the least. Um, it works quite well. But uh, we'll go into that when I get to that section of the, the video. Another one is I had another um, viewer and uh, I guess one of the members of the channel who suggested to like to see more of our my workstation, my workspace. So when I'm done going over the two Lego builds, I will be showing the workspace, my office, which is just a cluttered mess. It's got Lego boxes, Lego builds everywhere action figures everywhere I need to basically declutter it's kind of like my mind where there's just stuff everywhere and uh, my office is primarily where I do most of my work I do some writing um, design things such as that there and um, that's where most of my work gets done but then I do my modeling and my painting and my messy work downstairs in the uh, basically my workstation but, um, again, uh, I really appreciate everybody coming back and finding me. And if you're new here, I really am happy to welcome you to the channel. Again, I haven't had any way to come up with a name or idea for a title for the channel. But I am the Nutty Buckeye, and uh, I consider all my viewers Buckeyes. If you guys don't want to be Buckeyes, you can come up with a name for yourself, whatever. But um, <clears throat> I really do appreciate you guys coming here and giving me a chance to watch the video. So let's get on to seeing these two Lego builds, and then we'll go give you a tour of my, my workspaces. This is the Lamborghini Cyan Lego set 42115. It had 3,696 total pieces, and they recommended it was an 18 plus kit. As you can see here, it's done this pretty interesting neon green coloring um, did this pretty sharp looking gold tire build out and uh, the wheels actually do work with the steering column it's kind of interesting how you can turn the steering wheel to make the wheels work <clears throat> my giant hands don't fit in there to turn it too well but then they have the butterfly style doors which is kind of cool makes the door open. That was one thing I had to mess around with, figuring out how the doors worked, getting those going. And then um, one of the things that was kind of frustrating on the build is they have the coolest, coolest way to build the engine. The engine had some of these most amazing pistons that you actually build separately, one at a time, and they would fire individually. So you could build it, and the pistons would fire. And I, so I shouted to my wife, Mrs. Buckeye, Mama Buckeye, and I was like, hey, you got to come see this. And I shouted to her, and you can actually see the pistons, and, and you can make it work. And they'd each fire separately and individually. And then underneath this Lamborghini sign here, where it says Lamborghini, that's where they are. So you built this amazing, beautiful 
engine that stays, I mean, where the pistons fire, they just cover it with a Lamborghini sign. But that's how they wanted it done. So I went ahead and did it that way. But still, it was just a, I mean, I was kind of surprised they had me do it that way. But it was, all in all, that was a, one of the cool things about it was just the, the engine was just so unique. And the engine, of course, with one of these luxury cars is usually almost always in the, in the back. And then you can see the, the interior. It's got these two racing style seats. Pretty sweet, the same neon green highlights. Got a, a shift knob. Steering wheel, the steering wheel has the same Lamborghini logo that they've got on the tire and the, on the golden imprints. Just like that Lamborghini and the bowl logo. They've got a kind of a cool little, it's not as nice as like some of the ones you get with like the Star Wars builds for the Ultimate Collector series, but neat little sign calling out what it is. And then let's spin it around and show you the front. Sorry, I've got dog hairs for the the nutty pup puppy. She's a, a husky and she's got fur everywhere. You can see the hood with the again the Lamborghini and the bull logo. They've got they've no shortage in showing off the brand name, that's for sure. It is one sweet looking ride when it's all finalized. But the the trunk space and the storage space, it works. Trunk goes up and inside they give you I don't know if it's supposed to be like a luggage, a purse or what. But a little baggie that goes with it goes down inside the the cyan. I'm not kind of going to zoom in too close here. It's like my own personal VIN number for the car. And uh, I don't know what you can do with it, but they said to, it's your own personal, like, owner's, like, uh, title for it. So I'm going to just keep that covered in case any of you were out there being dirty little thieveses. You know, like those those hobbitses that are out there in the world. They like to take everything. But I'm going to put the little bag back in there. Then we'll shut the trunk. But I mean, check this profile out on this beast. I mean, the little white beams, his headlights, is kind of a, a different feature. I didn't really expect it, but still just amazing. And the wheels, the way it works, and just drives along and the, how the tire the steering wheel works with it so cool but again just uh it was a beast of a build like everything interlocks on other other pieces it's amazing how one piece leads to another piece to another piece and uh so just so crazy how it's just all interlocking but i mean that's just how technic is it's all all built to work together and work that way. And there's another view of the interior. You can see the the steering wheel there. Hope I'm not making anybody motion sick with the camera. Just want to give you guys a view of the, the back side here. I'll show you the, the booty of the car. The way the, the tail lights look. Yeah, again, that was uh, probably the hardest build I've ever done with Lego. And again, it was primarily Technic. And uh, Lamborghini Scion. It's, uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. It might be the Cyan. But it's got a working steering wheel. The pistons rotate as the tire, the pistons fire off as the tires spin. And the, the whole car, it's a working vehicle. I mean, of course, without an engine. You might be able to make one of the lego remote control engines work with it i don't know i've never really played too much with those that's another part of the lego stuff i need to really get to work on more one of the things i actually really liked about the way the this this car in particular or this model set in particular came when they distributed it was it was just different than other sets and it's 
it might be silly, but just something I, I found that I liked that other sets don't have is most other sets, they're done all in bags. Well, this set, when I got it from the the viewer who just doesn't want to build it, it comes in this box where you open it and you see all these boxes instead of Legos. And each one of these boxes, like box one, this is actually box two here, but box one is here. And box one contained all the bags that were labeled as box one. So you had to build, so he had started on that box. So bags, bags one were in this box. And then you move on to box two. And then to box three. And then to four and five and six. And it took two instruction manuals that were both basically books. And uh, it was just a fantastic way to lay it out. I thought it was just so unique and different. And I just love the look of it. The lime green. For the for the Lamborghini, this one, I really liked it. But um, they, I think they're kind of overusing it now. They're doing it again on the, the Mustang GT. And they're a bit of an overuse with it. But <clears throat> at the time when this one came out alone, I really thought, wow, that's a really unique looking color. Really unique looking car. But now it's kind of getting a little overused. But that, all in all, was a difficult build. I like it. I really like it. I like the finalized build. I like how it looks. I like the silhouette of it. I like the finish of it. Um, again, it was a hard build. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I wasn't up to snuff. But if you guys like Lego, if you like tough challenges, if you like Technic, give this one a shot. It's a little pricey. But, hey, it's a, it's a great build. And Lego is one of the most fun hobbies out there. Now, I'm going to show you one I worked on on my own. And what's frustrating as can be is the week I finally finished it, Lego announced their version of it is coming out, like, it, probably in another couple, two months, three months. And I was so frustrated. I was like, oh, I just finished mine. So I wanted to get mine out and show you guys. So let me show you my version of that next. And, uh... Then I'll get on to show you the tour of my workspaces. All right, thanks a lot. All right, we are back and here we are with my mock-up and my own particular Lego build of what I've been working on. As you can see, the show that I'm fond of is The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett from Disney+. Plus. This is my version of the N1 Starfighter, the Nubian N1 Starfighter from the Disney Plus series. What was so frustrating to me, again, as I said earlier, was the second I got mine completed, I saw an ad come up on the internet. Not an ad, but just a review, an announcement, I guess, on multiple fans of Lego channels that Disney had announced their version of it and it would be coming out soon. I was like, are you kidding me? I just finished mine. But I think mine is pretty sharp. I uh, based it pretty much the exact silhouette of the original one from uh, The Phantom Menace. It is actually my favorite Starfighter. I've got every version of it from Lego. I've got multiple toy versions of it. I have two versions of the one that the three and three quarter action figures can fit in. So uh, when we were watching the first episode that it appeared in on the Book of Boba Fett, when they showed it in the tarp as they're about to untarp it, I told my wife, I said, oh my gosh, that's a newbie in one. <laughs> because I just, I love this ship. When, when I first saw it in The Phantom Menace, I thought it looked like just a, a muscle car, like some kind of a, a street racer. And it's just so cool. But the way they designed it and did it up for uh, a, a being for like Grogu's living area for him to ride co-pilot or just to go along with Din Djarin, I thought that was a unique idea. Instead of doing it 
um, a, a droid or an astromech. I thought that was cool. And then when, when he can click in that afterburner, instead of going to hyperspace necessarily, I added this blue flame. That was actually an idea that Mama Buckeye gave me. And I think it really, really gives it a nice little kick because when that ship can just burst into that total, total kickoff of speed, that, that really kind of gives it that nice little show. So I wanted to have something like that. And a lot of the builds I've seen, a lot of the mocks I've seen, and even the one from Lego, they don't have the three in intakes on the engine. And that was one thing I was proud of with mine. I wanted to make sure I tried to be as accurate as possible. And again, I mean, no, you're in Lego, so you're just, you're trying to do the best you can with bricks, bricks compared to the reality. And, and I feel I did the best I could, but it, again, I kept going back and forth to the show each different image I saw a couple times when I'd see things like when, when he was talking with cab Vance next to it, I was like, Oh, I got to go change that. But, um, I feel I did pretty good. There's a few things I wouldn't mind adding up in the front, like a couple openings up here. But, um, again, I feel pretty good about it. One other nice thing I did with mine that I, I haven't seen on others. I did see Disney added it on theirs or Lego added it on theirs. They put a storage section right in here for guns and his jetpack and things like that. And I definitely wanted to do something like that because I thought, well, he doesn't have his big carrying vehicle like the um, Razor Crest anymore, so he can't live in it necessarily, but he's got to have some way to take things with him. So I added this storage section where he could put his um, guns. So he's got his um, blaster. He's got the... Uh, Sorry about that. It looked like the video died for some reason. But he's got his blaster down in there. He's got um, the dark saber in there. His disintegrating rifle, which I think technically might have been de um, disintegrated or blown up when uh, um, Moff Gideon had the uh, razor crest blown to smithereens. Because I think that was on that. But that is one thing I definitely wanted to add. Just a nice little place to for him to carry his stuff. I don't have his backpack. Um, I need to get one of the backpacks out of all my stuff. I, you'll see I've got more than enough stuff to add to it. And oh, I just knocked off the, the flame. But um, it's uh, it's just something that's easy to add on. But uh, I just wanted to make sure he had a space for all of his stuff for him, he and Grogu. But I think it's a nice interpretation of the ship. The colors, all the different like uh, spots where there were holes in the ship, the uh, gears and such. I just, I really liked it. And I really am, I'm proud of the engine. Mama Buckeye helped me with that one as well. That was some of her idea. I was kind of torn and stuck. And I just said, hey, do you have any ideas? She is a real, I mean, I, I'm, a, I'm a Lego fan. And I, I like building Lego and doing Lego models. But Mama, Mama Buckeye, man, she is a Lego nut. She can come up with stuff like when it comes to our collection, I can ask her if she knows where a piece is. And she knows exactly where it is in the entire collection. And it's insane. Uh, maybe I'll take a little brief tour tonight and just walk through and show you just an idea of what that looks like. But she can tell you exactly where our stuff is. And it's insane. But, um, yeah, so this is my version of the Lego in one. Oh, yeah, you can see the two little bottom s strips on each side. I don't even know what they are in the, sh in the show. But the original N one did not have those kind of things. And on the original N one it actually kind of landed as well. It had a lander, and it had, like, ladders you had to climb up to get on it. Um, it had uh, not necessarily landing gear, but it landed on the platform, and it was a little different. But this one, it seems to hover when he stops. Don't know what completely happens when all the power completely dies on it. Like, does it just crash to the ground or what? But they haven't really explained that. I'm hoping to find out in maybe one of the books about the Mandalorian, or maybe they'll discuss it on the show eventually, because I'd like to find out what it does, per se. I don't know. Who knows? 
But again, this is my build the way I thought it would look in Lego format. Don't know what you guys think. I hope you, you like it if you if you've seen it, what your thoughts are, if you agree, and uh, what you, uh, if you think Din and Grogu and company would be satisfied with their ship and their starship and their, their transportation, or if you think they'd be unhappy with their ride. But I think I'm pretty, pretty happy with what I've done. I am proud of it and proud of what Mama Buckeye has helped come up with. But uh, now let's get on with the tour of the Buckeye work area, and we'll go from there. All right, thanks a lot. All right, guys, here we are with my workstation. This is my little bookshelf right next to my desk where I work. It's got um, some role-playing game stuff on it, actually, and uh, tabletop gaming for Lord of the Rings. Got some of my, uh, well, real estate books. Then you've got my laptop, book of Overwatch, um, some journals and other portfolios and things like that that I need for work. Um, and then I've got banking stuff, regular just office materials you need. You've got your pops and statues and the like. I've got windows that let me see the world. And then I've got my thesaurus. Oh, sorry, trying to make everybody sick there. Thesaurus collection there and writing, journal, like books on how to write. I took a lot of writing classes at Ohio State. And uh, a lot of them were very interesting. One of the classes, the actual book for the class was uh, Stephen King's On Writing. One of the best uh, writing books I've ever read on giving tips on how to become a writer. I really thoroughly enjoyed that one. And then uh, I've got my book on Excel and uh, action figures, as you can see, just taking over everything. There's my N1 I was showing you earlier. Um, statue of Aimer as he's crashing down to support Helm's Deep in their time of need. Then, uh, you know, the greatest soccer club on the face of the planet. Some autographed pictures. My reminder. And the cutest soccer player on earth. She's adorable. And then you've got some uh, just Marvel, Marvel Lego figures. Mainly Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, it's just a hot mess. They need to be put out and uh or displayed gambit these are specially made gambit figs because lego has never made gambit but it is beautiful he's a gorgeous looking gambit minifigure one with his jacket on and his brown sleeves and one with the jacket off with black sleeves ready to tear it up in the danger room but uh yeah, those are my Marvel Legos. They need to really be put away and displayed somewhere properly. And as you can see, I've got a ton of Lego boxes that need to be put out properly that uh, just really need to be put away properly. That closet, though, is literally full from the ground to the ceiling beyond the top of that with stuff and I'm going to show you because it's embarrassing but that's it's, it goes to show just how much this Lego is an embarrassment I've got some comics out here I need to get filed but okay wait for it this is this is going to happen this is really going to happen oh god this is embarrassing oh my goodness from the floor to beyond the ceiling oh my gosh He's got so much crap. Yeah, I've got way too much stuff. Way too much stuff. But eventually I gotta find a place to sort it on, display it all or something. Either that or my wife and I gotta buy a bigger house. Let's try to talk to Miss Buckeye, Mama Buckeye, about buying a house. Bigger house. Not a house. We've got a wonderful house. We just need a bigger house. But 
so those are all my Lego boxes. And behind those, you can see I've got some role-playing games. The Prancing Pony sign right there. Somehow, I think I ended the video once again. <laughs> Don't know if it's user error, which it probably is, because we've got a user who's getting to learn how to do everything. But uh, as I was leaving off, there's my Prancing Pony sign. All those Lego boxes are in front of more uh, gaming books, um, role-playing things such as that. As you can see, um, some of my bold action books are right behind Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Yoda. Bold action's a great, kind of a historical wargaming thing for World War II, but it's faster paced than a lot of the older historical games. More of a Star Wars statue collection, action figure collection. I love that wrapped canvas of Din Djarin on top of a... Um, man, my brain has just collapsed. Um, it'll come to me, don't worry about it. Another picture of Din Djarin. Then you got some autograph pictures I've got from Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. More statues of Lord of the Rings around the room. Um, samurai Sword, and you've got um, Genji's Samurai Sword. Some boxes of Overwatch statues and Boba Fett's helmet. More autograph photos are back in there. Personalized painting back in there from my grandfather. You've got the statue of Edoras. Lego that has to be stocked and put out or displayed somewhere. Five shelves of Lego that is just a hot mess. Needs to be reorganized and display the, the uh, third shelf down and the second shelf down aren't too bad. Those are my Lord of the Rings shelves. I've got those pretty well organized. But the very bottom shelf, which you can't even see right now, it's so covered, um, is uh, Star Wars. That's kind of a hot mess. Then you've got my Ninjago Overwatch series shelf that's just a, a mess. And then the super mess that is the top shelf of Star Wars. That is a, uh, a mess. And yes, Din Djarin on a do-back. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. <laughs> Sorry. And for anybody that's a super Star Wars fan that's watching that's cursing me, my bad. My brain is a hot mess right now. But um, this is the office where, as you can see, my brain is a hot cluttered mess. And this is where I do most of my daily work when I'm not at my job. I've got another job that I pretty much work from this office when I work from here. When I work and it actually pays and I have clients, I get paid like I'm happy about it. But uh, this is where that happens and a lot of the thinking and working gets done. And then this is where a lot of my fun gets done. But I want to learn to do more with the action figure photography and work on that because that is something I'm very intrigued on. But um. Now let's go downstairs and take a look at the other part of my workspace. All right, see you in a minute. All right, we are down in Mama Buckeye's area, so be careful. You might see a Mama Buckeye sighting, um, and you might hear some kitty Buckeye whining. He's begging for food all the time. But these are some of Mama Buckeye's Lego builds, some of her Lego heads. Why uh, strawberry shortcake is on the gargoyle? I have no clue. And this shelf needs to be worked on because it is uh, ugly, needs um, knobs as you can see. I think uh, somebody ate them, not pointing any fingers. Here's a bit more of my collection and stuff, what I do. This is some of the Lego stuff I've worked on and uh, some of my stuff that I love. This I, I got inspired of by Hachiroku on, uh, I forget what channel, but I, I love Hachiroku's builds. That guy is just so incredibly talented. When I saw it, I knew I had to create one of my own. And then, as I said, how Mama Buckeye can pull a Lego out of anywhere when I asked her, this is a bit of the hot mess that is our Lego collection right now. There is one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven of these 
container store storage racks full of Lego. And when I asked Mama Buckeye if she can help find a piece that I need, not only does she whip it out and find exactly what it is, she can tell me exactly what drawer, what shelf, what tray it's in. So she's a person that is, even though it's chaos, she knows where it is. But um, to give you an idea of how her mind works, this is the table of Lego she's been working on. Ah! All right, everybody, this is the basement where I do a lot of my work and painting and miniature work. Got a lot of my boxes there of stuff I've worked on, games I've played, some of my collection of bags and transport materials, my armies. I've got my Iron Snake chapter for Warhammer 40,000. I've got my Vestroian Imperial Guard unit in here. <clears throat> this is uh, basically how I keep my miniatures stored if they're not stored in protective battle foam cases. I've got my pops. These, a lot of these have been donated to me. Some terrain, my Ogre Kingdom's army, Republic army for Imperial Armada, some miniatures working on for the Lord of the Rings Journey into Middle Earth, miniatures for the Lord of the Rings miniature game. As you can see, this is my one of my paint tables, storage underneath there. Another paint table currently being taken up and covered by a humidifier and a fan doing some work and more pops. Absolute clutter that needs to be cleaned up and stored away. I got trash, boxes of stuff that's been brought over. I'm putting it here in storage for one of the people I have watching the show. More storage and clutter underneath the uh, paint table. Um, as you can see, I'm working on trying to put some edging on some terrain. Got to paint some highlights on some explosion explosion pieces and damage markers. Lord of the Rings miniatures that need to be worked on and get some paint on those. And these are some Mega Block Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures that were donated. Not these two big boys. Those are just little collectibles. Got to find out where his sword went. My daughter lost it. And uh, but these are Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Mega Blocks that I am definitely going to be building some of those and you'll probably see a review on the Mega Block Turtles here coming up soon then uh, as you can see this is another station I work at heavily working on some terrain as well just for another uh, table build I want to work on for uh, uh, bolt action like you've got the hedges, hedgerows for where the World War II soldiers come marching down the hedgerow, hedgerows and then you've got your, your fields and farmlands like your tufts of hay, um, hay barn, hay fields, stuff like that. We got some Lord of the Rings signs that have been scavenged from Games Workshop stores, craters, fences, bridges. Oh my! Then we got my uh, terrain mats, more terrain, more terrain, more terrain. More terrain. Explosions. But uh, yeah, this is basically my work area where I try to get my messy work done. Here's foam that I use to build hills and stuff. A lot of times I build the hills, flock them up, and just give them away to stores when they need them. Those are for quick uh, tournament kick out when people are needing stuff for a tournament. Some old White Dwarf magazines. This, uh, these drawers are all full of miniatures. Those boxes, some are full of miniatures, some are just old boxes that are empty that I like the box art. But um, again, this is my workstation. And uh, this is how I get my stuff done when I'm relaxing and in hobby time. But for those of you who have come back and found me for one more time and have enjoyed what you've seen, enjoy the building and painting of miniatures, modeling, Lego, and you like the topics of what I've talked about, be sure to tune in again. I would love to hear from you. Any comments on how I've done my 
my viewings and my recordings for this week's or this month's episode, please let me know in the comment field and uh, let me know what you thought. If there's anything you'd like to see, anything you, you've seen in the background of any particular models or things you've seen in my office, or if you want to see more of what you've seen in the background, let me know and I'd be happy to talk more about that stuff. Um, it's just stuff that I'm into. I love all the aspects of nerd culture. I love talking about the TV shows. I love the hobby in general. It's just nerd culture is something I, I love. And uh, I really do want to learn more about uh, painting and photography and just how it works, how you catch the light, you get the right lighting, the right angles. Those are just little things that can make something just work and look so much better. So uh, be sure to, uh, if you've got friends that you think might like the, what they've seen, be sure to let them know um, and give the uh, video a like. If you haven't yet subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and uh, be sure to let everybody know that you uh, found some goofy moron named the Nucky, Nutty Buckeye that you'd like to watch. And uh, hey, if you haven't thought of it yet, try to come up with a name for the channel and uh, maybe we can get an idea of what we should call ourselves and what we should call this, uh, this monthly video and this monthly thing I'm doing. And who knows, at the end of the year, maybe we'll have something I want to do again weekly next year but uh, thanks again for tuning in and coming by and showing up hopefully I've got something you guys like again next month alright well Nutty Buckeye signing out thanks again have a good one guys remember if you guys ever need to talk to somebody if you ever feel like there's just something going on that you gotta get off your chest remember there's always somebody out there that you can talk to there is somebody that will listen to you there are people that care you're not alone out there. People will listen. Just, just don't, don't do anything crazy. Remember, there's somebody always out there. You are always in somebody's mind. Somebody out there will, will be there to listen to you. And just remember, someone cares about you. No matter what you're going through, you're on somebody's mind. You're in somebody's heart. God bless. Have a great day. Nutty Buckeye signing out, guys.